Uh, we're not going to go over all of this stuff. We're going to go over mainly just the Witch Doctor stuff for now. I figure you guys can go through and read all this, uh, you know, kind of general stuff as far as the Kanai's Cube and all that yourselves. I want to go over the actual class-specific Witch Doctor stuff. So that's what we're going to do. So one kind of cool thing, I mean, it's, you know, not terribly relevant for the most part, but you can put Hex and Horrify on your left click now if you want to, your left mouse button, which potentially could come into play at some point in time. I'm pretty sure that I've tried to put both of those abilities on my left click before and it didn't wor end up working out, so, uh, I, you know, it's cool. I like that. There's, there's no reason for you not to be able to do that, to be honest. All right, so down to the Witch Doctor stuff. So let's go over the uh, skill changes first. So we've got uh, Acid Cloud, the skill rune Corpse Bomb, damage increased from 525% to 620% weapon damage, a little bit of boost to Corpse Bomb. I believe you can run Acid Cloud in like a Helltooth build now, which we'll go over the set changes here in a minute. Um, so I'm assuming that's why that got changed, potentially as a spammable ability in Helltooth with the multiplier from the six piece bonus. Core Spiders, Skill Rune Blazing Spiders, Spiders now return 3 mana on hit, and then Widowmakers now increases the total damage to 700% weapon damage. I believe the 3 mana on hit used to be on Widowmakers, and now it's on the Fire Rune of Corpse Spiders. Uh, Corpse Spiders, again, we'll have to test it, but uh, I believe that with the new Witch Doctor set, wherever you cast your Corpse Spiders, the Spider Queen from the 2-piece bonus moves to where you cast your Corpse Spiders, and then will attack in that area and put down webs that slow and deal damage. So uh, potentially like a fire build with the new set might be something that's uh, that's doable. Fire bats buffs. Skill rune cloud of bats, damage radius increased from 8 to 12 yards. Again, uh, potentially has implications in both Helltooth, I believe, and the new set. I know the new set buffs any creature spells, which fire bats is considered a creature spell with the six piece bonus. Uh, skill Rune Plague of Bats, final, dam final damage increased from 638% to 660% weapon damage, so that's the Poison Rune. And then Vampire Bats, damage type changed from Fire to Physical. Fire Bomb, Ghost Bomb, damage type changed from Fire to Cold. I'm not really sure how relevant that's going to be, well, well, it remains to be seen. So Hex has been pretty freaking buffed, man, it's pretty nuts. Hex is going to be used in the new set, um, and honestly probably will be used in a lot of different things, because of how good it's going to be now. Now has an animation and summons the shaman or toad at your cursor location. And then the summoned shaman now stands in the location where it was summoned. Summoned shaman's cast range increased from 25 to 50 yards. So even though it's going to stand in one place and not follow you around, it has such a large range now that you'll be able to control where you put it and it'll sit there and continuously uh, do its thing. Damage bonus increased from 10% to 15%. And then the skill rune angry chicken damage type changed from physical to poison. Now. I believe the Mana Juma's two-piece bonus from the Ceremonial Knife and the Mojo were changed to affect Angry Chicken, so I'm assuming that's why they changed it to Poison, uh, for depending on like maybe some speed builds, because you get like 100% more movement speed when you're an Angry Chicken with the Mana Juma two-piece, so we'll see how that goes. Skill Rune Hedge Magic, damage type changed from physical to cold. Skill Rune Jinx, damage bonus increased from 10% to 30%. So you get an extra 30%, that's pretty nuts. And the damage type changed from physical to poison. So Toad of Hugeness is a pretty uh, key part of the new set. There's some bonuses there, especially the four piece bonus. It's been redesigned. Every second for five seconds, the Toad pulls in the farthest enemy within 45 yards. So you get kind of a nice little pool effect there without having to use Perinado or potentially use it in tandem with Perinado to really group things up together really well. Uh, swallows him for 0.5 seconds, then spits him back out, leaving the enemy with a debuff that deals 750% weapon damage over 5 seconds and increases damage taken by 25%. Pretty insane. I've always really liked the Toad of Hugeness rune. I'm really pumped that they buffed this because it's one of the coolest abilities in the game as far as just, you know, flavor. It's just a, it's a cool thing. You summon this giant frog that just eats things. Pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, skill rune unstable form. Weapon damage increased from 135% to 500%. Um, I really don't know how good that's going to be, but it's a pretty significant damage buff. Mass confusion changes. Devolution. Chance to summon a zombie dog increased from 30% to 100%. Pretty decent. Mass hallucination. Weapon damage increased from 195% to 400%. Mass hysteria. Maximum number of enemy stun increased from 6 to 10. 
Dude, honestly, you'll be able to stun just about everything that you're trying to uh, with Mass Hysteria now, so that's pretty good. Unstable Realm, cooldown reduced from 45 to 30 seconds. Pretty much just buffs across the board. I don't really know how good Mass Confusion is really going to be with any of these buffs, but it makes every rune better, so that's always nice. Plague of Toads, Skill Rune, Piercing Toads. Damage type changed from Poison to Physical. Skill Rune, Toad Affinity. Damage type changed from Poison to Gold. Now, I'm assuming they're doing this to make a little bit more build variation. Plague of Toads is considered a creature spell for the brand new Witch Doctor set. Therefore, I would assume that some sort of Renho Flare uh, Plague of Toads build is going to be viable. Again, we're going to have to test it and see how it goes. Soul Harvest. Gaining additional Soul Harvest stacks will no longer remove all existing stacks and will instead be added to them. Any new stacks over 5 will replace the stack with the shortest remaining duration. That's pretty sick. Should pretty much be able to keep 100% uptime on max stacks of Soul Harvest now. Should have been something that they added a long time ago, but it, that's fine. I, I like it. I don't think Jade's really going to be all that great. Although, you know, it remains to be seen. We're definitely going to be testing it a lot. I still think it's going to have survivability issues more than likely, but who knows? With difficulty changes and monster changes, maybe not. Maybe it'll be good again. And then Skill Rune Soul to Waste has been redesigned. Now grants 5% movement speed per stack. So you're going to have a lot of movement speed in Jade, which is pretty sick. I really like this, especially for speed farming uh, non-greater rifts. If you're just farming regular greater rifts, this 5% movement per stack, Jade Harvester, up to at least this patch, was the fastest way to farm Torment 6. So it may still be the fastest way to farm Torment 10, and this gives us even more movement speed in that build, which is great. Wall of Zombies has been removed, replaced with Wall of Death. Raises a wall of zombies 28 yards wide from the ground that blocks enemies and attacks them for 800% weapon damage as physical over 6 seconds. Uh, pretty big buff to the old wall of zombies and then the runes really are pretty crazy so let's go over them skill rune consuming uh communing with spirits summon a 15 yard radius spectral ring that deals 1400 percent weapon damage as cold over six seconds now i believe this is going to be similar to the uh ring of zombies spell that the witch doctor has in heroes of the storm so it's going to like surround enemies which is pretty sick Chills all enemies who walk through by 60% and reduces their damage done by 25%. A lot of damage, a lot of crowd control there, and a lot of damage reduction. Skill Rune Firewall. Summon a firewall 40 yards wide for 8 seconds that burns enemies who walk through, dealing 1000% weapon damage as fire over 4 seconds. A giant firewall sounds pretty darn cool to me, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, skill Rune Wall of Zombies. Increase the width of the wall of zombies to 50 yards and knock all enemies back behind the wall. So this is like the, the old knockback rune, and it's uh, just a giant wall of zombies. 50 yards is a huge, huge radius. Skill rune, ring of poison. Summon a 15 yard radius ring, so a ring just like the commuting with spirits rune, for 5 seconds that poisons nearby enemies, causing them to take 1200% weapon damage as poison over 8 seconds. And then we've got surrounded by death, raises a circle of zombies from the ground that traps and attacks nearby enemies for 1000% weapon damage as physical over 4 seconds. So I'm assuming all of these are, are you know, rings, 15-yard radius ring. I, I'm assuming this one's going to be 15-yard radius is two. The raise is a circle of zombies. I mean, we'll see here in just a minute. We'll try it out. But uh, I'm assuming all those are relatively similar in how they, how they work. So zombie char charger changes. Skill rune, explosive beast. Explosion, explosion damage increased from 532% to 580% weapon damage. Explosion radius increased from 9 to 12 yards. Uh, skill rune lumbering cold damage increased from 196% to 200% weapon damage skill rune zombie bears damage increased from 392% to 400% weapon damage now my hope is that a cold helltooth build and a poison helltooth build uh, poison using zombie bears cold using lumbering cold will both be viable i like both skills very much zombie bears kind of takes you back to the vanilla d3 days of just spamming zombie bears which i always really enjoyed that's kind of the reason why i started to play witch doctor in the first place was for that build so that's the hope the hope is that you get to you know just drop your your uh wall of death and then you know buff and debuff and just spam zombie bears as your main damage ability i would love that so hopefully that's the case passive skills bad medicine damage reduction increased from 20 percent to 25 percent duration increased 
from three to five seconds. A uh, little bit more damage reduction there, not bad. Blood ritual, mana cost taken from life increased from 10% to 20%. Physical attunement has been removed, replaced with Swampland attunement. Grants you and your pets 120 resistance to physical, poison, fire, and cold. So basically elemental resist per enemy within 20 yards. That seems pretty crazy for a defensive buff. Uh, getting all res out of that opposed to physical res, which is what it used to be, is pretty nuts. Spiritual attunement. Mana regen increased from 1% to 3% per second. I would assume that the reason why they buffed spiritual attunement and blood ritual are because of how much you're going to be spamming in the Helltooth set. From the looks of things, it sounds like you're going to be spamming you know, zombie bears or corpse bomb. Uh, you know, acid rain, something along those lines. So I would assume that's why those got buffed to kind of help with potential mana issues. This is going to be the first time in a while where we actually use our mana as a resource. Bug fixes. Fixed an issue that prevented reapplication of haunt poison spirit from applying the 20% damage taken buff. Fixed an issue that prevented fetishes summoned by the Gidbin from counting towards the Zuni Moss's haunt four set bonus. I actually didn't realize that was supposed to count towards that, so. Um, I still think the Gidbin is absolute garbage, but at least it gives you a little bit more of a bonus. Say you're at the beginning of a season, and uh, you know that's the best weapon that you have. You get a little bit extra bonus out of it that way. Fixed an issue that caused each fire bats, hungry bats, to deal half the listed damage. Now that's interesting. Um, I wonder if fire bats, hungry bats is going to be a little bit better. I mean, obviously it's going to be a little bit better, but I wonder if it's actually going to be like viable whatsoever. Kind of doubt it. All right, items wise. Quota reduction and resource cost reduction can now roll on normal shields. Bane of the Stricken, new legendary gem. Each attack you make against an enemy increases the damage it takes from your attacks by 1%. Gain 25% increased damage against Rift Guardians and bosses at rank 25. That seems absolutely insane and uh, could very easily potentially be a staple legendary gem in most, most builds. Um, I'm going to go over the items that are relevant to the class. So, Azure Wrath. Aura damage increased from 30-40% to 40 to 500-650% weapon damage per second. I believe the Aura from Azure Wrath deals damage to undead enemies. So that's pretty nuts. You get like a Skeleton Rift, something, something along those lines. That's pretty crazy. Oh, and now also affects demons too, so there you go. Uh, now knocks enemies into the air instead of knocking them back. Interesting. So instead of actually like knocking things out of potentially your radius of the damage you're dealing, you just knock them into the air instead. So it's still crowd controlling them, but not moving them away from you. Fulminator's Lightning Rod damage got increased by a good bit. Now rolls with a guaranteed primary stat instead of attack speed. Not bad. Hellfire Amulet now rolls with a guaranteed socket every time. Stone of Jordan once again rolls with plus maximum resource as a secondary stat for all classes. Uh, Thorns of the Invoker, this set now only drops for Crusaders. Thank you, RN Jesus. Alright, class specific stuff. Let's get down to the Witch Doctor. Coils of the First Spider, while channeling fire bats, gain 60,000 to 80,000 life per hit. That is a lot of life per hit. I mean, I'm thinking like potentially you just you walk into the middle of a group. And, uh, you know, say with the brand new set, you're wearing this. Um, you pull everything in with Paranado and the Toad of Hugeness and just channel Fire Bats for your damage in a, as a melee build, as a fire melee build for Witch Doctor, and you're just getting a ridiculous amount of life per hit back. If you have enough uh, damage mitigation, which through the set and some other things, potentially you could to stay alive, you'd have a lot of sustain there. Seems pretty crazy. Um, I'm assuming that's Coils of the First Spider. Uh, I'm assuming that's Bracers? I'm not sure, though. Jerem's Bracers, new legendary Bracers. Wall of Death can be cast up to twice again within two seconds before the cooldown begins. So you can potentially cast Wall of Death three times with those Bracers and the Helltooth set before the cooldown starts. Pretty sick. All right, so Helltooth Harness has been redesigned. The two-set bonus, enemies hit by Wall of Death are afflicted by Necrosis, becoming slowed and taking 25% weapon damage every second for 10 seconds. So Necrosis is going to do some other things here we're going to go over in a minute, but just 25% weapon damage every second, 2,500% weapon damage every second for 10 seconds is uh, a lot of damage. I mean, that alone is going to do a ton of damage, and potentially it's something that I look at and I think with 
the um, the other item, the Jerem's Bracers, where you can cast it three times. Potentially, it's something that you could do, like the Del Sears bonus, where in say Torment Ten for speed farming, you drop the slow time and it just stays there and deals damage while you teleport away. You can maybe do something similar to that with um, the Helltooth Harness. You know, just drop it on the ground; it'll continuously deal damage to the enemies there as you just move on for for speed non-greater rift farming, which could be cool. The four set bonus, after applying necrosis to an enemy, you take 50% reduced damage for 10 seconds. So you're pretty much just gonna be at 50% reduced damage all the time from this four piece. Um, six set bonus, enemies afflicted by necrosis take 800% increased damage from your primary skills, which are acid cloud, fire bats, grasp of the dead, piranhas, wall of death, and zombie charger. So again, on paper, it looks like you're gonna be going with some sort of either zombie charger, acid cloud, or fire bats spamming build. One of the three, I'm hoping zombie charger ends up being the best overall, but it remains to be seen. Corpse bomb could be pretty darn good. Um, obviously with zombie charger and lumbering cold, you have to be in pretty close melee range, also with fire bats, whereas acid cloud you can cast from pretty long range. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Henry's Perquisition? Is that how you say this word? Henry's Perquisition. New Mojo. The first time an enemy deals damage to you, reduce that damage by 45 to 60% and charm the enemy for 3 seconds. It's pretty interesting. Nice little uh, defensive mojo. I'm going to assume this is the new cat mojo. There's like a kitty cat mojo that they teased it. I think BlizzCon, I believe it was, and they never came out with. So I'm assuming that's what that's going to be. It'll probably have that graphic. Manajuma's Way has been redesigned, the two-piece. Your Hex, Angry Chicken Explosion damage is increased by 100% and slain enemies trigger an additional explosion. Your Hex, Angry Chicken now lasts 15 seconds and movement speed as a chicken is increased by additional 100%. That sounds awesome. Hopefully, which I've been trying to do forever for Torment 6 speed farming, is just make a straight up Angry Chicken build. Your, all, your, all your damage is from Angry Chicken, and you just move around super fast and blow things up as a chicken. Hopefully that's possible now. Uh, it sure looks that way. Hopefully you can build around that and buff Angry Chicken enough to deal enough damage. You're definitely going to be moving fast enough in Angry Chicken form, so we'll see what happens. Alright, so the new set. Spirit of... I'm not really sure how to say this either. Arakir? Araker? Arakir? Who knows? Uh, two set bonus. Summon a permanent spider queen who leaves behind webs that deal 1500% weapon damage per second over 5 seconds and slows enemies. Uh, the spider queen is commanded to move to where you cast your corpse spiders. So we're getting CC and a ton of damage out of a permanent spider queen from the two piece and then we get to move it around wherever we cast our corpse spiders. I'm assuming we're going to run corpse spiders probably to get mana back and then also command the spider queen around to where we want it to be attacking and crowd controlling things uh, and then probably use some other ability as our actual damage dealing uh, ability more than likely four set bonus hex gains the effect of the toad of hugeness rune uh, so you get to run any other rune you want to as hex and then you get toad of hugeness anyways while toad of hugeness is active you take 40 percent reduced to damage after toad of hugeness finishes his meal you will heal for 10 percent of your maximum life per second for 10 seconds so really, Hex is going to do so many different things for you. You're going to get a lot of crowd control out of it. It's going to pull enemies in for you. You're going to take reduced damage. You're going to heal 10% uh, of your maximum life. And uh, you're also going to be dealing more damage to the enemies from a debuff from it. Pretty crazy uh, utility from that ability. And the 6 set bonus. The damage your creature spells is increased by 500%. Creature spells are Corpse Spiders, Fire Bats, Hex, Piranhas, and Plague of Toads. So again, I think we're looking at... Um, Potentially either some sort of fire bat spam or plague of toad spam with a Renho Flare uh, Remains to be seen. I do think some sort of Renho Flare build is going to come out of this set though I hope it will at least the Renho Flare is probably my favorite item in the game currently It's always been really fun to play with in my opinion. So hopefully it does spider queen's grasp now rolls with 45 to 60 percent corpse spider damage that's a lot of corpse spider damage. Uh, I actually didn't realize that was in here. I, I skimmed over this earlier and I didn't see that. Um, heck, maybe just spamming corpse spiders is potentially something you could do with that. That's 60% corpse spider damage is really, really crazy with this new spirit of Iraqier set. 
Uh, Zuni Moss's Haunt has been redesigned. The two-set bonus now also reduces the cooldown of Fetish Army by 80%. So, you know, that's pretty nice, especially in the beginning of a season, once you get the two-set bonus. You pretty much have really close to 100% uptime early on on Fetish Army, um, even if they die. So, I'm assuming by also reduces the cooldown of Fetish Army by 80%, you, they still last until they die from the two-piece bonus and the 80%. So, even, you know, even if something nasty kills them, you can resummon them pretty much at, uh, at will, you know. This is also really good for, like, Carnival builds. For instance, like if you're doing really high greater rifts and your fetishes end up dying to something, you can just resummon them right away. Especially like if you have this 80% and you have say the Star Metal Kukri ability in your Kanai's Cube, or you're just running it and maybe you're Kanai's Cubing Dagger of Darts, um, you should have pretty much 100% uptime on recasting Fetish Army, which is quite nice. Let's see if there's anything else I really want to go over. I think that's about it. That's pretty much all the Witch Doctor stuff. You guys can go through and read. All the general stuff yourselves and check that out maybe I will make a video on it at some point but I will put this on YouTube um, so yeah there you go